So which games are the most important for Ohio State in 2020? Don't talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on Step Mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related. Sports related, we have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Ohio State's schedule according to the ESPN's Football Power Index because I like the predictive stuff and I like the predictive measurements. And it's kind of fun to go through the schedule and be like, okay, I thought that that team was actually going to be pretty good or give Ohio State a pretty decent chance. A lot of this is based on how the teams performed last year, what the returning production looks like, where the games are being held, what part of the schedule that they're going to be held in. Of course, we're taking into account nothing that relates to the pandemic when doing this. So there's that. But let's just go through it because it's fun. Look, chances of winning out in the conference are at 49.3%, which is really stinking high, right? You're expecting Ohio State to just run the table once again, run through the Big East division, straight into the Big Ten championship game, and get back to the college football playoff. And I cannot see a fault in that strategy, right? Looking at the chances of winning out, actually really, really high once again. 18.4% of them going 12-0 and throughout their regular season schedule. This against some teams that have some pretty outstanding FPI rankings offensively and defensively. And really, overall, when we're talking about their own schedule ranks, right? I also think that it's interesting to point out that Ohio State's strength of schedule ranking right now is 29, right? As their FPI ranking is 30th when we're talking about strength of record. So we'll see what that means as we get closer to how other teams play. Texas, LSU, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Notre Dame, Clemson in November. But that's interesting to point out. They have a 99.9% .9 chance of beating the Bowling Green Falcons. I, I see no, nothing wrong with that logic. If anything, uh, if Ohio State doesn't cover the spread against Bowling Green, then that might be the reason that you want to doubt them. But it's not a good enough reason. Then it drops to 62.4% chance to beat Oregon at Oregon that's strong right that's strong when we're talking about what Oregon could be and the identity of the offense going to change tremendously it's going to do that because Joel Moorhead is calling plays now and because Justin Herbert is no longer the head uh, or excuse me it's going on to the quarterback try to make him the head coach what am I doing look Tyler Schuff or Anthony Brown make them susceptible I think Tyler Schuff was working in another system knew another system really well could have been really great if they were able to hold on to Marcus Arroyo. They weren't able to do that. So Joe Moorhead comes in, but we know that his offense was working when he was offensive coordinator at Penn State. And to a degree, working at Mississippi State. Got him to a bowl game, right? And has been an outstanding recruiter. I assume they're going to run the ball quite a bit, give it to C.J. Verdell, see if they can't actually make that eight-man box dissipate by doing some play-action stuff or take advantage of that eight-man box and do some play-action stuff. It's really going to be about whether or not Josh Proctor gets one or two interceptions in that game, but 62% is also just the second most difficult game on their schedule at Oregon. Interesting to point out. 98.5% chance of beating Buffalo. I don't think many of us expect Buffalo to give Ohio State a run for their money. And then there's Rutgers, which I guess you have to play, but I think at 98.7%, I'm not only going with that, but I think there are a number of Ohio State defensive players still on that team that remember Greg Schiano, that probably don't have fond memories of Greg Schiano, who can't wait to stick it to Greg Schiano, who is also trying to build something like a Troy of sorts, where he's grabbing up all the transfers, putting them with himself and Sean Gleason, and they're going to try to make a run at this thing as the Scarlet Knights. They're just not going to be able to make a run at this thing at Ohio State in the shoe. God, that could be a bloodbath. Iowa on October 10th. 93.8%. They're changing over a lot of what they had personnel-wise. They lost A.J. Epinesa. They lost Nate Stanley. They also lost their strength and conditioning coach, who turned out to be just problematic. They're paying a million dollars to go away. Kirk Ferentz is going into yet another year in which eight or, eight or nine games are winnable. Ohio State ain't one of them, right? Go to Michigan State. That's 96.6% .6 chance of beating Mel Tucker in his first year. Scotty Hazleton being his defensive coordinator. I like Michigan State. I just don't like them this year, right? It's kind of like Arkansas in that way. You got to build it before you can actually sell it. And when you're building it, just 
covering the spread against Ohio State would be a tremendous win for that Spartan teams this year, even if they're at home in East Lansing. Then the big one, they traveled to Penn State in Happy Valley, in State College. It's going to be a big game because you get Mike Parsons back if you're Penn State. You got Sean Clifford coming back. Noah Kane, I think, is ready to burst out. You find somebody to replace KJ Hamler as your dominant receiving threat, and you got a shot here. 61.8% is the projection from the Football Power Index. It means that Ohio State has a 61.8% chance of winning that game. But after watching Michigan and Penn State last night, you know, because that's what I did on July 4th, I think that it's within James Franklin's reach, and I agree with so many others that say that this is the game for both of those teams that is going to shape their season because that game is going to probably give us the Big Ten East division champ and the representative in the Big Ten championship game, and we assume that the winner of the Big Ten East is going to win the Big Ten championship because Ohio State, Penn State, and even Michigan are all better than the top three teams in the Big Ten West when it's really just Wisconsin and perhaps Minnesota and then it's the best of the rest. So we'll see about that. I'm excited about that. Could be a whiteout. Maybe not with the pandemic, but it's definitely going to be a big game. Then they get Nebraska at home. They have a 96.2% chance of beating the brakes off of Scott Frost and them. Scott Frost has got to get something going. And if he gets a win against Ohio State, it's going to do a whole lot for how Nebraska fans feel and how they feel about him and getting him to that next year in which they travel to Oklahoma, and that's going to be a fascinating and awesome game, right? I think that 96.2%, you can see that the FPI is very much in favor of Ohio State. Then they go, no, they get Indiana at home, 92.9%. Ohio, in Ohio State and Indiana has never been like a really big matchup, but after what Indiana was able to do last year, particularly over the course of the season, I think they were ranked for like the first time in like 20 years last year in the coaches poll. Could be a lot of fun. We'll see if there are any fireworks. But again, 92.9%. You can see how Ohio State is heavily favored there. Then they're going to Maryland and to Illinois. Maryland, they have a 97.1% chance of beating Mike Loxley and Josh Jackson. Even as they are adding Rakeem Jarrett, who's probably going to be one of the better freshmen in that entire conference this year. And even as they're going into year two of the Mike Loxley experience, Perhaps it won't be the beat-em-up that it was last year, but it's certainly going to be an Ohio State win. Illinois, the fighting Lovey Smiths, they have a 95.3% chance of beating Lovey Smith and Brandon Peters. Though Brandon Peters is getting a little bit of NFL draft buzz and a great way to supplant yourself as one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL draft 2021 is to go at Ohio State's neck because that's going to be the best defensive back group that you face all season. It's going to be the best defense that you face all season. And if you can carve them up, you can carve up anybody. But at 95.3%, you could see how Ohio State is probably going to win that game going away. And then the big one, the game, Michigan, they have a 91.7% chance of beating Michigan. That's got to suck if you're a Michigan fan because they haven't actually won that game in nearly 10 years. And we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of the last time that Michigan beat Ohio State in football. And it's not like they make a habit of doing it. I want to say it's like three times since the turn of the century that Michigan has actually won that game. And none have happened in the Jim Harbaugh era. Matter of fact, I had to dunk on Michigan football's Twitter account because they were trying to gas up Jim Harbaugh, the boss, as they called him. Like, you ain't Springsteen. Anyway, they're trying to gas this dude up by putting all these stats up here, trying to make him look good. And I'm going, yeah, but show me when you can put an Ohio State win on this resume. And it doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. It seems like Ryan Day, Kerry Combs, Justin Fields are all going to be too much for Michigan again, even as I believe in Dax Hill. And I think he could be one of the better players in the Big Ten this year. They're getting back some running backs that they like. I mean, Charbonnet's not bad. You're going to break in Joe Milton or Dylan McCaffrey at quarterback. I think Joe Milton could actually win that job, but they're just not going to be good enough to beat, uh, to beat Ohio State, even in the big house, which, you know, ought to give them the advantage that they've been looking for, but they've had that advantage before, and they continue to hold these L's. All right, that is it for me. As you can see, Ohio State's favorite in every game. Win projection, 11.3. So they're looking at 11-1, and one, but I, I can't see the one. Might be Penn State, perhaps. Yeah. Could be Ohio State in a route for this season. Could be. Different for me. Doses.